All right, here's a recipe I just developed here a couple of weeks ago. I uh, had this idea to take these uh, sirloin pit steaks that are real thinly sliced, as you can see the sticker, thin cut. I picked them up for just uh, under five bucks, as you can see there. And uh, I decided that I was going to cut them up into these spear tip size pieces and fry them and uh, serve them up with some kind of dipping sauce. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I lucked out and nailed it for the first time. The whole family loved it. And this is what it's going to consist of here. As you can see, I've got a lot of ingredients on the counter. But it's a two-day recipe. So I'm going to do some prep on it tonight for something that can set up in the fridge, which is going in this blender. And as that sets up overnight, you know, we'll tear into this tomorrow, you know, maybe for lunch or something to get uh, some fresh fried steak pieces going. We're going to go ahead and start out with the cream. I'm going to go about a whole cup of cream here. There's our cup. And I need those uh, wasabi almonds to chop up pretty quick, so we're going to put them right down there with the blades. And I'm just going to throw in about... I don't know, a dozen or so of those. And uh, some fresh mushrooms, just a handful of those. And we'll go with some spinach. See how that treats us there. And uh, these are not going in here. They're actually going to cook with the butter on the stove. So we'll leave that out, okay? But everything else you just saw, that's the way to go. Throw the lid on it and blend it. Okay, there I've mulched it pretty good. So you can see the consistency in there is pretty thick. Tipping it completely sideways and it isn't coming out. So I'm going to add just a little bit more cream. So I don't want it that thick now, but I want it about that thick once it's set up real good. We'll blend it one more time. Now we're taking it to the stove. This is what we were talking about before. Have the scallions and the garlic. Well, we are going to start that off with some butter. And the garlic and the scallions because we want that flavor in there to release immediately. Which, as you can see, it's doing now. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start adding that, that cream in here. As you can see, it's still fairly thick. It'll soften right up here as it heats up. Now we got all that in there. As you can see, I'm bringing it to a boil. And it's loosened right up, see that? Now, as soon as it gets to a nice rolling boil all over the place here, I'm going to kill that heat and let the power of reduction kind of take over here. But before I do that, well, here goes the heat. Before I let the power of reduction take over, is what I'm saying, is I'm going to dump some of this Parmesan in there, which of course is one of the main ingredients there for an Alfredo, which is what I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a little bit like, just a little distorted, in fact, way distorted. Definitely isn't a, your traditional Alfredo with all those wasabi almonds and spinach and mushrooms in there, but all that stuff goes in there pretty good for this sauce, trust me, it's going to be great. So we'll just let that reduce here a little bit. And uh, throw in a dash of cayenne and a dash of pepper. Just for a little bit of kick. And if you don't want the cayenne, I know some people are scared of it. Just stay away from it. And I like the black pepper as well. And I don't need to do a lot of the black pepper. This is mostly just for speckles and looks in the, in the sauce when it sets up. Okay, now I killed the stove here just a minute ago. You can see it's a real good consistency here. Just the way you want it. So, I'm going to take that to the bowl and throw it in the fridge. We're going to call this good. 
I'm going to leave it uncovered, and that's important because it's so hot right now. I didn't want any uh, bacteria to create in there by covering it up. So I'm going to leave it like that until it completely cools off, and then I'll come back and cover it up when it's cold. Okay, here we are. Next day, had all night to set up. Now, I checked on it last night when it cooled off completely, and I waited a few different hours here and to see how long it was really taking to thicken up. Because as you can see, it's got a, a butter consistency. I can push on it, and it's, it's pretty tough the way it's thickened up, which is the way you want it to set up. And then you can just mix it up here so you can get it ready for presentation when we cook the rest of the steak tips. But this is what you want. It only took a few hours last night, and uh, so it just goes to show that you can make this on the same night if you want to prepare it just a uh, few hours earlier than the rest of the dish. Okay, I've mixed that up real good. It was a little bit too thick for my taste, and what you can do at that point is just add a little bit more of that heavy whipping cream that we created this whole thing from this from the start and then it can get to this real nice dip viscosity and that's something that you want to work with and we're going to serve this part of it cold so I just wanted to make sure that it was whipped up real good and uh, it was going to be the way you want it when you're dipping these steak tips in it so no big deal I'm going to go ahead and cover it back up and refrigerate it and then we're going to get to, to work on the rest of the, uh, the steak tips here. Alright, good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, tear into this. I'm going to slice this up here in just a minute. These are the, the thinly cut steaks we talked about earlier. What I've got here is just a grocery store sack. Make sure you don't have any holes in the bottom. Um, I like to use this so when I shake the steak pieces in here with all the batter I'm going to be putting in this bag it can completely cover and it doesn't make it a mess in here, you know. So what I'm going to do here is drop a cup of flour in there. I've got one-third, or actually it's a quarter cup of the uh, yellow cornmeal. That would be this. And uh, I've got some Italian seasoning. And uh, I've gone over that before in some of the videos, but the Italian seasoning consists of several different ingredients. It has majorum, thyme, rosemary, savory, sage, oregano, and basil in it. And I'm going to put about a teaspoon, maybe a tablespoon's worth in there. Cut that good to go. About a teaspoon of salt. And uh, actually I need the uh, black pepper as well, which is behind me. I like the black pepper in there. I kind of like when you do Kentucky Fried Chicken. And uh, I like a little sweetness in there with that cornmeal. About a teaspoon of sugar. Okay. Now I'm going to mix this thoroughly. Okay, there we go. All I did is I just closed this thing up and I shook it and moved it all around. And now we've got a good even blend of all those ingredients. Now, what I'm going to do when I cut these steak tips up, before I put them in here, I'm going to put them in an egg wash. And the amount of steak that I'm going to use only is going to take one egg. And that's all it's going to need when I mix this in there. And along with that egg, I like to have a little bit of this chili powder mixed in with it. And I just throw in a little dash. As you can see, I just sprinkled it in there. All right, let's get cutting up that steak. Okay, here's the uh, the steak. Now, as you can see, they're already fairly clean for the most part, and they are very thin here. You see that? Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to slice them up into about inch and a half to two inch long pieces, uh, maybe about a half inch wide, and we'll go from there. Okay, there we go. Get it all nice and tidied up. What I mean by tidied up, got it all chopped up exactly the way I want it. Now, I'm going to season it just a little bit before I go to the egg wash and before I take it to the flour, okay? And I'm using this Goya, which is just on the Mexican food aisle. It's, it's just a little bit of extra seasoning with garlic salt. 
And I think that's the most important thing right there is, is the garlic salt. So if you've got garlic salt and that's all you've got, just use that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. It's exactly the way you want it. So do a little shake over that. Don't want it too much. Get it mixed together just a bit here. And then I'm going to take this and put it in the bowl here with the one egg. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to mix it up in here real nice. Get it all completely covered. And make sure you do this for a good minute here. Spend some time with it. Make sure you get the egg everywhere on this steak so it can have a chance to get flour coated evenly on every individual piece. Okay? Now you see how simple that is. That one egg covered that perfectly, as you can see right here. There's, there's not much egg left here on the bottom. It's distributed nice and evenly. Okay? Now we're going to take that and I'm going to put this in the bag of flour. And we're going to give that a shake, which is going to require two hands. So over and out. Okay, there we have it. I've gone ahead and separated it out, throw it on this pan. Now if you've got a sifter, um, you know, something to separate the flour a little bit into a bowl or something so you can completely get rid of all the excess flour, that would be great because you're actually going to have a lot of flour left over. That bag had the majority of it, but it's important to have that much flour to evenly coat everything that you need coated here before we go to fry. Now here's a good time. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and start turning on your heat. I got about medium high, which is now going to require an even coat of oil. I'm using canola oil. If you'd like vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever your your fancy is, I'm just going to put enough to evenly coat the bottom of the pan, just a nice thin layer. That's all we want. Now this is a good time while that's heating up, and this is sitting, which is required for about five to ten minutes so it can stick to that meat. It's a good time to cut up this tomato and uh, one green onion here, to make some scallions out of it. Um, going for a little bit of a counterbalance with the spiciness of the meat and the richness of the dip we're going to have by having the tomato in there. And you can add, if you want to go sweet even, you know, and, and, and nice and suck in with some juice, you know, you can throw in some pineapple or some uh, papaya or mango, some grapes, whatever you want. But the point is, is to have something that can counterbalance I can't stress that enough, the taste of that steak, which is great. But if you eat it over and over and over by itself, it can be overwhelming with the richness and creaminess of that dip. So that's the next thing. I'm going to go ahead and dice this up into half moon shapes, real thin pieces that I can toss in with that steak after we fry it. There we go, just like that. Now I'll just throw that in a bowl all together and get ready to add that after we fry the steak. All right, it's time to rock and roll here. Over to the stove. We got some nice hot oil in there, and I'll prove it by dropping in all the goods. I wanted a, that mid-high to high heat so you can keep it crisp on the outside and tender on the inside. And we're going to go ahead and just cook this here for a couple minutes and get it nice and crispy. Alright, now we got some real good color on there, okay? This is when we add the tomatoes and the onions. Now, we don't want to cook these. We just want to toss them in there and give a real good mix of the flavor. Like that. And then we'll go ahead and see if I can one hand up to the plate. And then I'll rank it. We want to make a pocket right here in the middle, and we'll put that uh, refrigerated dip right there in the center. And that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Right there in the middle. Now, you want to impress your friends, your family. I don't care who you're making this for, loved ones. This is the way to go for an appetizer. Everybody loves steak. And if you throw this out for the first thing on your... Uh, menu before everybody else gets the real dish, they're going to be pretty impressed because this thing rocks. I'm telling you, it's the goods. So uh, as they say in the TV world, tune in next time, Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen.